Listen, I am trying my darndest to make these glasses work, but they refuse and it's just super glare. Hey guys, it's Brie with the Bee Face and today we have another Love is Blind review. Um, we are at episodes six through 10. So I did episodes one through five and now we're doing six through 10. Oh my gosh, stressful. And then the next, uh, I think 11 and 12 come out on November 9th. So, episode six, Matt and Colleen get back together, okay? I mean, good for them. Um, <laughs> Netflix cameras are super messy because as soon as Colleen was like, yeah, we're just more in love now, they immediately panned to call. I was like, you're being messy. You're doing that on purpose. Um, so, they are now leaving the resort. They have their phones back, you know, about to cause some more problems just in their regular lives. Um, SK and Raymond have like their own little handshake that they were doing. I was like, that is so cute. Y'all are so adorable. Um, Raymond said something about like trying to wait until they get married to have sex with SK. And I'm wondering what that... Like, I wonder what the motivation is for that. I mean, you know, good for you if that's what you want to do. But I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm curious if that's like normal practice for her or if it's because this is such a short experiment or um, like attraction level. I don't know what it is for her. I'm, I'm curious what it is. Um, so Cole's family does not approve of that whole situation and that sucks for both of them i think it sucks for cole because it's like he has said over and over again that family is super important to him um but Na uh, whew, not nancy zainab her parents are both gone and so i think it's like doubly important for her because you know she wants to be a part of her in-laws family too so that's unfortunate so Bartice and Nancy, they get to talking about how involved her ex is um, in like her real estate businesses and Bartice is having problems with that. But then she said something about making 200K a year and he was like, I think I could get on board. <laughs> um, Alex, uh, not Alex, Alexa and Brennan get to talking about a prenup. Honestly, in this type of situation, makes sense. Because if they got married and then like got divorced immediately or something like that, I mean, that would be, that would be a hard thing to do. You know, that would be hard because it's like, does he have to pay you spousal support? Do you have to pay him spousal support? It's a lot. And clearly she makes a lot of money and her dad does too. So I imagine there's a trust fund in there somewhere. Um, Raven meets... Uh, so this is the episode where they're like all meeting the parents. So Raven meets SK's parents or his uh, mom and brother. And, you know, they are making some Nigerian food and all of that stuff. Uh, then we get to talk about Raven's parents um, and her family is not going to come to the wedding. Um, but the SK's mom seems to really like her. She was like, I think I love her. <laughs> like good for you I mean at, at least it was that easy you know that it doesn't have to be a situation where you know the in-law has to work for it you know like you have to you know do x y and z for me to accept you and love you and all of that stuff she just kind of immediately was like I mean it, it's his decision to make but I like her so that's all um then Bartise meets Nancy's parents uh, Bartise is very energetic like he is very much a people person like I can see him being like out and about and just like you know never met a stranger type thing like he is just super energetic almost bouncing off the walls to be honest but oh those uh the the brothers Nancy's brothers take him outside and they are grilling this man and uh one of the brothers is like yeah, I don't think I like you <laughs> or like we're kind of iffy or, you know, whatever you just said don't make no sense to me. So I don't know what you like. What are you trying to pull here? <laughs> they, 
they were grilling this man. I mean, she's the only girl, so I get it. But Bartiz is a talker. Um, and then they go and meet Nancy's mom. And the mom was basically like, I know criminals. So if you mess up, it's no problem. I got that. <laughs> like, she was like, I'm a bail boss. I taught my daughter how to fight. Like, all of that stuff. I was like, oof, okay, mama. Uh, <laughs> Cole um, meets Zainab's family. So um, her stepmom is in her life and stepbrother. Um, but her sister, I think she mentioned in a previous episode that her sister's still in England. So um, she is just not around. Um, but... I thought Cole did a really good job of explaining his feelings for Zaynab. Um, and I also liked, um, I liked how the stepmom was explaining Zaynab's real like desire for family. And I think Cole really got an understanding of like who she is. Um, but I did, I, I liked that whole interaction. I mean, the, the stepmom prayed um, with him and all of that stuff. So you could tell that th this was really important for them, that they weren't just saying it, like this is like the life that they really are trying to live. Um, and also I love that Cole was saying, like even when we're arguing, I'm not looking for a way out. I'm just trying to remember, you know, why did I fall in love with this person in the first place? Why did I propose to this person in the first place? So I, I liked everything about that interaction. I really did. I think that was very, healthy and good and necessary for them. Um, <clears throat> so then um, SK and Raven get to talking about him moving to California for grad school for two years and you know what that's going to look like and him he said you know like I have enough of a savings where I can actually do that I have a full ride to the school you know but I am going to have to like live like a student and Raven's like, yeah, I'm staying in Dallas. And I also feel like if I'm married, whoever I'm with should be paying half the rent or wherever I'm living. Um, so this is the first time I think that I've seen SK have an actual problem with anything that Raven does. I feel like SK bends to whatever she says, but in this situation, it was very much like, she can be very uncompromising. And it's like, yeah, dog. like that's a thing. So that was very interesting. That was like the first time he really kind of stood up and was like, yeah, I, you, you're not being, um, accommodating. Um, and so Bartis and Nancy, that they, they have this very serious discussion about, you know, abortion. It seems like they have very, very different views. Um, I liked how the conversation went because they weren't yelling at each other. They were listening and, and even Bartiz was like, oh yeah, I didn't even know this was a thing. Like I didn't, I didn't, um, I think he just, you know, just women's health and how informed are men really. So I think he was just like, you know, expressing his views based on his point of view. Um, and I think he did at least understand where she was coming from, even if he didn't agree. So I did like how that conversation went. Um, and then uh, Brennan meets Alexis' family. That, that family is an attractive family. Like the stepmom looked super young. Like she looked real, real young. The dad was very like, you know, like salt and pepper. He, he looked very good. I was like, okay. Not only do you come from money, you come from great genetics. All right. Um, and so then uh, this episode cuts off with the dad being like, I just want to have a private conversation with him. Um, and Brendan sweating bullets, basically. So then episode seven, uh, the dad basically, you know, is just talking to him about like um, how the dad is talking to Brennan about uh, he wants to make sure like that the life that Alexa is used to, she's not going to have to forfeit to be with him. Um, and you know, Brennan, I think did, did really good in, in talking about how he feels about Alexa and what, you know, how he grew up and how that informs his life now and things like that. 
Um, but then the dad gives his blessing and then he pulls out a gang of knives and was like, you ready to be Jewish for real, for real? <laughs> I'm like, not the circumcision, sir, calm down. Um, then Colleen meets Matt's family, uh, which they immediately seem to like her. The mom was crying a whole bunch. Um, <laughs> But they did, you know, the mom did ask a lot of good questions. That's one thing that I have liked about this show and meeting the family. I think because it's not just a dating show that the point is to get married at the end of this, um, that the families are actually more serious. I think in other shows, specifically Ready to Love, these people are just like, hey girl, and that's it. And like, there's not really any depth there, but this one, there's always one parent who is taking the, you know, the fiance into the other room and like, this is what I'm concerned about. This is the type of person this, this man or woman is. Um, these are the things that I want for him or her in their life and all of that stuff. And they're always very serious about it. So um, I do like that, but they all seem to like Colleen. Um, they, uh, the mom did, want to know like is this genuine like is this going to cut off once the camera's cut off or blah, blah blah but colleen seems to convince her like that this is real she's like i don't think i'm that good of an actress i'm like girl you would be surprised um but <laughs> that was that interaction um zaynab and cole um are having a very honest conversation about his family and how I mean, kind of unsupportive they're being in this situation and he seems to be having his own revelation about um i guess what a relationship with christ looks looks like in your relationships with other people and i mean he made a very good point he was like i didn't think that having a relationship with jesus meant that now everything is is judgmental for like i, I thought we were supposed to love people more not less and there there is a, a point there um there is there is a point there. I do get where he's coming from. I, I a little bit understand where the family's coming from, where it's like, these are the values that we've instilled in you. You know, you're living with this person before you're married. And, you know, I, like, I don't know that we would want to support that or be a part of it. But I don't know. I don't know, I just feel like you are okay with potentially forfeiting a relationship with your son just because you don't agree with some of the choices that he's making, you know? And choices that don't really have anything to do with you. So, I mean, I see the point, I get the point, you know? And especially if you, as they seem to be, very much, um, in tune with their faith and, and really having a relationship with God, I, I get it. I get it from both ends because on one hand, it's like, I am making decisions and I want you to be a part of my life. And on the other hand, this is not the way that we have taught you, you know, you've grown up with. This is, this is not the way that we do things. However, you know, What's the compromise? I guess the compromise is we'll meet her when y'all get married. So whatever. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I think both sides have to just decide where the line is for them. And if that's the line for his family, he has to decide where the line is for him. So if the line is like, if you are not a part in this stage, you're not going to be a part of the next stage. That's something he would have to come to terms with on his own. I think, you know, you just have to make a decision about it. And also understand, I think, a little bit, this part is temporary. So the line in the sand about, I can't believe you don't want to be involved in this journey with me, is it's temporary. Because once you do make that decision and you do decide to get married, then those doors can be opened. But I, I do see where it's like, well, if you were here right now, then you might be able to help me make this decision. So, yeah, I, it, it's really, it, it comes down to just personal choice at this point to me. So then um, Nancy meets Bartice's parents. To me, it seemed like he talked more than she did. 
Um, but then he brought up like their abortion conversation and the sister really broke down about that. Like she had very strong feelings about it. I mean, it's a serious topic. Um, and you're either on one side or the other, or I mean, there's, there's a little bit of a gray area in the middle, but I think the sister was definitely on like, this is how I, I feel. And I, I'm so passionate about this. Um, and it, it almost seemed like that kind of curtailed everything. Like, like that kind of soured the whole meeting. So, I mean, is that something he should have brought up? Mm, it's an important discussion. And if he's really looking for his family's input and approval and blessing, then, I mean, that's something, that's something, <laughs> you know, that is a big deal. Um, so, uh, I mean, Alexa meets Brendan's family, but I didn't really have anything for that. Um, SK meets Raven's friends, um, and their holdup is SK going away to grad school. But then they also said, like, she's never been in a serious relationship, and they think she might end up breaking his heart. So, you know, hmm. Um, then Bartice and Nancy are kind of having a hard time now. Um, after the meet the parents and he's just basically like the physical attraction is just not even there anymore Like I can't even be physical with you. There's just so much going on. I, I like I can't even You know, like I can't even muster <laughs> Basically, and I was like that was fast that switch happened very very fast um, But then that oh my gosh, so everyone, you know all the couples get together at this little, you know bar thing and then Andrew, like people from the, the pods came, and then Andrew came and, sh and starts to talk with Nancy, and now Bartiz is over here looking like the green-eyed jealous monster. Like, I don't understand the difference. You are over here telling this girl that you are no longer attracted to her, that you are having a hard time m matching this emotional connection with the physical now, and we're just having so many problems. She is having a conversation with a man and you got to come over there and be like, what's up? Mm. How the turntables <laughs> turn. <laughs> Office fans will get that. That's a deep cut. So then um, uh, Zayna talks to Colleen about the whole situation with Cole. And then she goes over and talks to Matt. And now they're both mad again, both Zainab and Matt. And they just kind of blow up at their respective spouses. But then uh, Matt sits down, has a conversation with Cole and Cole is so agreeable about the whole situation. And I'm like, how are you more understanding of this man's point of view, this man's feelings and, and being so like, you know, reassuring to him, but the person that you are actually engaged to and have a relationship with, you, you can't muster that for her. That That is odd to me. Um, and so then, uh, Bartise and Nancy go home and they're having a conversation. Um, and then Matt interrupts and he, he calls and he's like wondering where uh, Colleen is. And I think Nancy was like, oh, I think she went to the club or something. And he was like, I am packing my things now. <laughs> and so Bartiz goes over there and he's like, at this point, you're just looking for problems. And I'm like, yeah, man, that is absolutely what's happening. Every time anything happens, you are immediately gone. Like there is no like 50, it's zero to 100, like immediately. So I think that um that's where that episode cut off and then episode eight um <laughs> we cut to colleen and she is you know doing her ballet thing and she was basically like he's still here <laughs> i think he needs to go to therapy i think he just needs to go talk to someone and deal with the underlying reasons why he thinks that women are untrustworthy and why he looks for an excuse to run before actually just, you know, 
assuming the best in people or assuming the best in the people that he's dating and just letting things organically move. I think he's just always looking for the other shoe to drop. And I think you need to deal with that, bro. Um, so then this is like the apology episode because Bartiz gets to apologizing to Nancy um, for something he said. And he was just like, I'm sorry if I made you feel any type of way or, or I'm sorry for making you feel bad. Um, and then Cole, I, I liked Cole's apology so much. He was very in depth about, um, you know, how he was making her feel and, you know, just letting her know, like he was very reassuring. I think this is when they were at the boat on the boat and he was just very reassuring. Like he just, you look so beautiful and you know, you're, you're, I'm just, you know, so in love with you and I'm sorry if I haven't made you feel that and all of that stuff and Zayna didn't seem very receptive at first but eventually she came around and I I like that interaction Cole seems very serious about making their relationship work um <clears throat> so then um we get to Colleen meeting Matt's friends and we get the whole club story and it was not as it was made out to be by Matt so Colleen's version of the story is that there are two separate cars for the girls and the guys and the guys, uh, they were all like, oh, let's go to the club. And then the guys left and they, uh, and she called Matt and was like, where are y'all? And he was like, oh, we came back to the apartments. Like we're just hanging out. And then the girls were like, okay, well, we are still going to the club. Like we're going to go. And then apparently she called him again. And he remembers none of this. And then she comes home and his bags are packed. And she was like, what happened? Like, from the time that we were on the phone to the time that I came home, like what happened? And so then we get into like him actually acknowledging that he blows things out of proportion and he just kind of makes mountains out of molehills a little bit and all of that stuff. And his friends seem to know. They're like, yeah, we get into arguments with him all of the time. Like he, but I mean, but there's love there. And so, you know, it never ends, but we do kind of butt heads. So I'm like, yeah, you need to deal with that. That is not a good way to relate to people. Um, so Raven uh, goes shopping with the mom and I think the sister-in-law um, and they're just, giving her, you know, they're shopping for like fabric for the head scarves for the wedding. And they're giving her very like traditional Nigerian advice about like always keeping food in the house and just being humble and, you know, always respecting the man and whatever. She just look at them like, I, <laughs> it won't be me, but thanks. <laughs> that is what she was looking like. Um, Zainab and Cole do like the lock bridge thing, which is really cute. Um, they seem very happy. Like when they're on, they are so on, but it's just when they are off, they are horrible. Um, <clears throat> and then we go uh, with them dress and suit shopping and um, everyone's getting into their relationship at the moment. So Bartiz apparently has been nicer to Nancy. Um, I, so for me, it's just a little too hot and cold. I don't know that I could be in a situation with someone who is just so like, the, the person's hot and cold. I feel like with Zainab and Cole, their relationship is hot and cold. Like when they're on, they're on, but when they're not, they're not. And with Bartiz and Nancy, it seems like she is very constant and he is like, But I think maybe him being jealous the other day was like, hmm, maybe I should be nicer to this lady because she don't have to be here. <laughs> um, Cole did say something that I just love so much. So they were, um, they cut to Cole suit shopping with his friends um, and he picked out some fabric or whatever. And he was like, no, she said um, either black or navy and 
you know, I think she is having a particularly hard time that her parents are not going to be there. Her sister can't even come because of flights and stuff like that. So I just don't want to do anything that's going to make the day just more difficult for her. And I'm like, how thoughtful is that? Like, they have the closest to what looks like a real relationship, you know? Like, he's so considerate of her and it's just so great to see. Um, and then SK and Raven have a conversation, um, and they're just having a bit of a disagreement about the role that family or like the importance of family, um, within a marital relationship. And, you know, it's very important to SK, especially because of the background that he comes from. And then for Raven, she's just like, I, I have a very small family. My mom does not want to be a part. My grandmother does not, she's sick. She cannot be a part, you know, uncle's having a baby. Like, what do you want me to do? Like you have talked to these people. They are fine with you. They are fine with this. They just do not want to be a part of this. And that's just going to have to be okay. So that was their conversation. Um, episode nine, uh, everyone's all doing their cute relationship stuff. And they, you know, they all seem like they're kind of settling into each other and settling into these relationships. Um, Bartise takes Nancy to get permanent bracelets where they just weld the bracelet onto your arm. Um, Brennan is learning about Jewish traditions with Alexa's, uh, family. Um, Cole and Zainab are dancing in the sunlight, just being all adorable. And then Cole was like, I'm just mad about you. And that made my heart melt. I don't know what the heck is going on with Cole these days, but he was being so lovey-dovey and affectionate and just hands-on with her and, listen, stay there. Just stay in that space because that's where y'all are good. And then you just get off of that and it's like, this makes no sense anymore. Um, Matt, uh, meets Colleen's parents. So I guess they're from Pennsylvania, which is why they couldn't meet earlier, but they have been speaking over FaceTime and things like that. Um, it seems like they like him, um, but Colleen is concerned with Matt's stick with itness. that he, she is concerned that he, he's a runner, which that is not unfounded. That has been very much established <laughs> this whole time. Um, SK and Raven have a cute date on a gondola, get a little boat ride. Um, so, you know, cute. <laughs> Matt and Colleen, they also go on a very cute date. They go to an aquarium and like they're having dinner in this like, you know, the aquarium, there's this little tunnel, but like the tunnel is like where the it's all water around you. So it's like fish swimming everywhere. It was the cutest thing. It was adorable. Um, but then they, they get to talking and they're having a conversation and yeah, Matt's, Matt, I think asked her something along the lines of like, do you think love is enough to sustain a marriage? And she's trying to explain herself and articulate what she feels and is thinking and he's like say it just say it just say it. i'm like you are doing it again <laughs> like you need to stop this this is not healthy in any like you cannot sustain a relationship under that type of pressure where the pressure is coming from the other person's insecurity so that you can't do anything you can't have any emotions outside of supremely in love because the other person is going to be so terrified that you're going to leave them. That is unhealthy and unrealistic. And he needs to figure that out before he tries to be in another long-term relationship. Because at this point, neither one of them is going to say yes. So we get to Cole being all affectionate and reassuring and Zainab is all happy. But then they're cooking in the kitchen and Zainab kind of comes in and she's just like, don't do it this way, do it this way. And he's like, I'm just trying to do something nice. I'm trying to be fun and you're just being kind of naggy. Um, so then they're like having a, a disagreement and an argument and he's just like, I don't understand why you can't just be nice to me. 
Like, you are not nice to me. Like, you get an attitude and you are just not nice. And, like, you would think that the person that you're getting married to, you would at least like them. Like, what is the deal with you? Then he asks, are you bipolar? And it just goes to heck in a handbasket from there. It's just ridiculous. So then um, episode 10, Zaynab and Cole do come to a very mature end to their argument because Zaynab like walks out and he goes and gets her and he's like, I don't want you to leave. I just, you know, I'm sorry for saying that. And she's like, I'm sorry too. She's like, do you want me to sleep somewhere else tonight? He's like, of course not. That is not what I want. I just, you know, it's just difficult to come to a place where I'm like, what's this marriage going to look like, you know? So, you know, we'll see how that goes. So then we're at weddings. So Raven and SK's wedding is very cute. It's very adorable. I love the, the decor. Like everyone has a champagne, like all the bridesmaids have like a champagne headscarf. The mom has a champagne headscarf. And then all the men, they have a champagne like cap or hat or whatever. And I'm like, this is adorable. Like I would love to do that. I probably, I am not Nigerian, but that looks like really like, I love a headscarf and you know, it's just really adorable. I love it. Um, this is the most emotional that we have seen Raven thus far. She is particularly stoic, but she has been crying nonstop since her friends walked in the door. And I, I did not, um, I didn't expect that from her. So then we get to them being at the altar and they say all their nice things to each other. And then the, <laughs> the lady asks like, SK, do you take this woman? And he says, I do not. And I gasped like, <gasps> I was so shocked. I was like, what? This is not real. That, that was a blind side that I did not expect. Like I, I was like, why would you do this to her? That was wild. And I, I, then he was like outside, you know, they're doing their little interview and I, he was just outside saying like, yeah, this was a problem and this was a problem and this was a problem. And I just kind of weighed the, the pros and cons of not having her versus having a marriage with all these issues. And it just, I would rather just not have her. I'm like, all those times you compromised, all those times you bent, all those times you were just like, yeah, that's fine. Were you just the whole time planning to just say no? Like, you didn't push for a compromise? You didn't, like, press the issue to see if maybe you could come to some sort of agreement where there was some level of accommodation? You just dipped? Ugh, there's a noise in the background. They're like doing some sort of construction on the house next door. So SK's mom actually goes in to talk to Raven and I thought that was the sweetest thing ever because the mom looked like she was just horrified that, that had happened to her and she just said, I love you. I'm sorry that this happened. And Raven's just like, I love you too. I'm glad that we could still have this, you know, moment that we don't hate each other and all that stuff. She handled it quite well. And I'm wondering if he told her he would, he was probably not going to say yes the night before because I'm like, I personally, if you are being this lovey-dovey with me, we have not actually had much conflict this whole time. I'm ready to say, because she said I was walking in there ready to say yes. And I'm walking in there ready to say yes based on this amazing relationship that we have had thus far and all of your reassurances, I'd be pissed. I would, like, she hugged him at the altar. I would have been like, how dare the audacity, like, how dare you blindside me like this? Like, I would have had questions afterward, like, what made you switch up on me? Like, why would you put me through this whole thing if this is what you were thinking or planning this whole time? I would have had, things to say and she was just 
just very calm about it. She was crying a lot, but she was very calm about the situation and I could not do that. So I hope she had a heads up. That is all I will say about that. I hope she had a heads up. Um, so then we get to Nancy and Bartise's wedding. Oh, the tears from this man. So Bartise uh, gets a wedding gift from Nancy and it's all like little tokens that just are reminders of their relationship. So he pulled like one thing out and he's like, oh, I know exactly what this is for, for from. Oh, I know what this is for. I know why she did this. And he just breaks down. He like has to leave the room from his friends because he's like, I like, this is a lot. Like she is an amazing, amazing person that, you know, just all these little moments that we've had in our relationship are so important. Um, so he, he was having a time. He was, he was breaking down. Um, so then they get to like the altar and Nancy says yes. And then it cuts off before we, did I say this was episode two? Yeah. Um, then we don't see what Bartiz says. We don't see what he says. I, when I saw him crying about that gift and like having to leave the room, that made me think he's probably crying because he's like, dang, I'm about to break this girl's heart and she don't even know. I cannot see him saying yes. I hope he does for Nancy's sake because she seems all in. And I think the fact that whatever wedding gift that she gave him was that detailed and that specific to them and their relationship and that it meant so much to him. I hope he says yes to her, but it did cut off and who knows. Um, and then the previews showed like the, you know, we're gonna get to see the last three weddings and, you know, of course see what Bartiz says. I didn't see Nancy's hair walking out all upset I thought I saw Zainab's hair walking out of the room very upset and like Brennan was somewhere saying he's sorry um and then there was a clip of Alexa getting her makeup done and she was like I would be so surprised if Brennan said no I would too but his his people have said he tends to run so it may be going good but he may veer left at the last moment but anyway, that is it for this recap review. Um, I These people are stressing me out, but I definitely want to see what happens in the next couple of episodes. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.